Hi guys and welcome to a new video. So this is my new Virgin Media Hub and it's the 3.0 version. So what I've done is instead of showing you the contents of the box because I like to have a close up of it, I've took all, everything out of the box and what I'm going to do now is show you what was in the box. So let's move that out of the way. So before I do that actually what I'll do is I'll show you the normal broadband from BT. It doesn't matter who you buy it from. If you're getting normal broadband, 17 megabits, or even fibre now, up to 35 if it's available in your area, it will be through a BT line. Unless you go with Virgin Media that have their own network, so you are sharing it with the rest of the country. And that's probably why it's quite poor, because they haven't invested in the network and they uh, and 90% of the country are probably running on that old system. So the way the feed comes into your router is with an RJ11 connection, which is that one, just a little square block. So it's quite a poor cable that one, and that's the back of, the, of a normal router there, with your four Ethernet ports. You're in in this side, and then your four Ethernet ports. So that's what a normal router looks like. I'll show you the cable. Just a small cable there. Let's see if it'll focus. It won't do. Anyway, you can see that small cable. which is square, it goes to a flat piece of wire and then it gets to what they call an ADSL filter and that filters out the noise on your phone line so your phone line's shared on this splitter so that's the standard connection of a, of a broadband a cheap one, but at the moment I'm with um, I'm with Sky and they're getting cheeky with the price now, they're charging me £30 and I don't want to pay £30 for standard broadband. So let's go ahead and show you the contents of the box. So this is the hub. As you can see, I don't know if you can see through there, but there are some metal covers on the chips and stuff like that. Let's just give you a, a rough look at what, the, what it looks like first. So that's both sides. And then that's the front panel there with a light at the bottom. So that's the hub. So the Pushfit Kellex now, which is quite good. So you can tell the quality really when you buy, when you get the box of of what they include in the box. So this is obviously a lot better quality. This is actually a new design, this. This is a Pushfit connector, which is a strange one, which I didn't realise they were even doing, but to make it easier to install, it says push, don't screw. So I don't know how long that cable is, but it's also got this, all I can think is a massive filter on it. And then it goes to that end. But it does actually tell you in the book to fit this red end to your router. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this cable directly to my brown box outside through an air brick. And hopefully I can get this really high quality cable straight into the back of the router. So let's show you what it says. Let's see if you can read it. Well, I'll read it to you. Technitex. Technitex RLA++ minus class A++ compliant. And it says 105 dB at 1 gigahertz. If you can see that. And I think that's the, uh, the code, the manufacturer's code there. And another interesting thing I've seen is on the end there. I don't know if you can see it. But it says 105 decibels. Let's put it the right way. It says 105 decibels moulded into that. So it's not a quick release or anything. It's actually designed. Let's see if I can give you a close up inside the cable. See if it'll focus. Come on. So it's a strange one. There's there's bent spring inside so it doesn't actually look like it'll weaken it by keep putting it in and out of the connection so it does actually just click straight on so it's got a, like a a bowed spring inside so i'll show you what it looks like connected and how easy it is so this is the back of the router and that's the new cable and it just pick, clicks on like that and it's quite a tight fit so it's quite a good design that if you can see that, there's a lot of glare because the camera's struggling to, to show light and dark. So let's pull that off. So that's simple, it's now off again. So that's the 
coax cable. I don't know how long it is. Let's show you the power brick. See if it'll focus. So that's the a light on power brick. So you need that made in China to uh, power your hub because obviously it needs a lot more power to push the 100, 200 or 350 meg megabits per second speeds. This is why it needs to be such a good router because uh, if you upgrade they don't want to come and change everything. This is another good piece of hard of uh, cabling that come with it. Comes with it, so it's a branded Virgin Media cable. See if it'll focus. So it says Virgin Media Cat6 UTP there, which is another good one. So it's a nice little cable. That that's your Ethernet cable for connecting to the router up to the back of your computer. And then this is the uh, the power brick power supply with a standard figure of eight connector. If you can see that, sorry about the focusing with this camera. So that goes through a normal flat cable up to a three pin plug. And then you get your spanner for undoing your old style of connectors, potentially outside or on your box. So let's go ahead and show you the uh, the router again, a closer up, a close up of the router. So there we go. So let's show you the, all the sides. So that all those air holes, as you can see, if I move the strip of light over it, you can see through the holes. So it gives it plenty of chance to cool down. I don't think I think it's a passive cooling. It relies on heat sinks and stuff like that. I don't think there's a fan on it. Let's go ahead and show you a close up. So that's where your power goes in there, and then you're on an off switch, and then that's where your coax cable goes in. There's a reset button there and then there's four there's four Ethernet ports there and then your phone lines are at the top so there's nothing else on there. Let's show you the front. So that's your on and off light. That's your pair GPS pair WPS sorry and I think there are either some lights underneath there or up, I don't think there are any up there, I think they're underneath there. So let's go ahead and show you the... Just bear with me. So what I've done is I've covered all the, all the components, all the codes on the bottom. But I can still give you an idea of what there is there. So it's a hub 3.0. And I don't know what that is, the model number. So it says at the top there Wi-Fi certified. And then it says your Wi-Fi network SSID. There's two feet either side there so it will stand up. And a US patent, www.ariscot.com forward slash legal. Other patents pending. ARIS 2015-2016, all rights reserved. So it's manufactured by ARIS. The settings password is there. The CE marks. And the input voltage is 12 volts at 2.5 amps. And the center pin is positive and the outer pin is negative. So I hope that might help someone decide. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, so the way you the way you connect this is you put your so you plug your power cable into your power brick like that and then you plug your power adapter this end as it says into the back of your router so you then plug the cable in to the wall by that end into the wall and don't switch it on yet so then connect your phone line to the hub if it's provided by Virgin Media connect the phone line to tell one at the top and then uh, on the back of your router now turn the router on with the rocker switch at the bottom there on the back of the router. So obviously you need your connection in, sorry, you need the connection in, which is the black one, is the red one, so you need the filter at the, at the router end, from what I remember by reading the instructions, so you'll have that big lump, if you get the one with a big lump, I don't know what that is, some kind of filter. So before you plug it on, plug it in and switch it on, you need this connected. 
So then you switch it on with that cable connected. Let me just take that off. So the hub may take up to 30 minutes then to connect to the internet and download the latest firmware and software. So the lights on the front, let's go ahead and go through them for you. Yeah, so I don't not quite know, sorry, I don't quite know where they are. So the Wi-Fi light, it's not on unless there is a problem, then it goes red. So there is a Wi-Fi light on there. The internet light arrows also turns red when there is a problem. And the software updating arrows, so those arrows, the internet light arrows, are also the software updating arrows. And when they are software updating, they're flashing green. So the phone light only comes on as a red light if there is a problem. So they're somewhere in that front or somewhere in the top there. Because I've not actually connected it yet, I'm not sure. There is actually another, what that tab is there, is that gives you all your passwords. Again, as a hard copy. So instead of having to keep going back to your router, if it's a long way from your computer, you can carry that with you and put your passwords in for your Wi-Fi and your router. And you can uh, use that instead, so take it to your computer. So the WPS button is there. Let's just see if I can give you a closer look of that. Push that in a bit. So yeah, WPS button there, pair WPS. So Wi-Fi protected setup. To add a Wi-Fi device to your network, the base light there, so that, that allows you to add a Wi-Fi device to your network there and then the uh, the base light usually stays solid white but turns red if there is a problem that one at the bottom there so that I've just gone through that and that's the um, that's the repeat of your of your passwords so you'll need to reconnect your devices to your new hub for a better speed always use the wired Ethernet connection for your PC so the instructions booklets let's go ahead and show you them just bear with me if you want to pause the video at any point if you've lost your instructions so that's just the basics there activation installation guide so I'll just go through and if you want to pause it at any point you can do so activate install your broadband install your phone if you want to pause that and read it you can do see if it's focused Yep, I think that's focused. So there's quite a few pages to go through, so I'll go through all of them for you. Activate your service. Then that one, I don't need to show you that, but that's what's in install your broadband. And they call that an isolator cable with that big lump in it. Install your broadband. And then it says install your broadband there, page two. So this is how you do it. Sorry about it taking so long. So install your broadband there. If you want to pause that and read it, you can do. And then this one. There we go. Still installing your broadband before you move on. So refer to your book don't take my word for it do what the book says but if you've lost your book this might help you reinstall it if you move house or something like that to a new provider and need to reinstall virgin again you have the hub but you don't necessarily have the instructions because who keeps their instructions and most videos on youtube don't go through the instructions and sometimes that's all people want so yeah, just keep going through the information that's provided. Some of it won't be pertinent to you, won't be of any use to you, but so we're still on installing your broadband. Install your phone if you've got it. If you haven't got Virgin Phone then you don't need to do this bit because not everyone does. They used to force you to take it, now they don't. So I've had enough of poor quality broadband from BT, it's time to move to get some decent upload speeds so I can start doing more 
uploading videos faster because they take forever on a normal one megabyte upload speed. They take seven or eight hours for a 10 minute video. It's just ridiculous. Well, for maybe a 30 minute video, it'll take seven or eight hours. It just slows down to a crawl at peak times. I'm not saying that Virgin don't do that as well, but they probably don't do it to the same level. And for the same money, it's crazy not to swap. So Wi-Fi wins, if you want to read that. Need help, it may well just be, yep, a website to go to or a phone number there. Did you call? The advisors are there to help, so if you're, struck, if you're stuck, give them a call. That's what they're there to do. That's what they get paid to do to answer your questions. And that's the uh, barcode and the information on the back. So that's that one. Let's go ahead and show you the discover how to get more out of your connection. So the basics. Setting up your Virgin Media Hub 3.0 other useful stuff. This will be a bit easier to go through this one because it's it's vertical booklet instead of a horizontal one. So six tips for winning Wi-Fi. If you want to pause it and read it you can do. Because who keeps their books? I probably won't keep them so I'll refer back to this if I ever need to. If, I, if the old router if the old hub decides to stop working and I need to know what to do, then I'll refer back to my own videos I have done before. There's the card again, that's telling you where it is in the bottom of the thing. So hub 3.0 LEDs explained, let's go a bit closer into that. So the internet LED is at the bottom, it is in that reflective black surface. So the Wi-Fi LED there, the base LED is at the bottom. The WPS button there. So internet LED, Wi-Fi LED and it doesn't seem to have a phone one now. So here's my card. That's the... I don't know if you can see it there. It says your Wi-Fi network name, SSID and your Wi-Fi password. That's what will be on that. Pop me back when finished. So you can basically take that to a, to a computer that's away from your hub. You don't have to uh, Write it down, it's already on on there for you. Nice little thought that. Nothing more annoying than having to write it down and run upstairs and then put it on your computer. So connect to your hub wirelessly. Installed, installed by our technician. Did you plug the hub in yourself? So there's both options there. So is everything connected and you've called the Virgin Media activation number? So connect to your hub 3.0 manually. Windows 8 setup. I'll try and pause it as long as I can, but obviously I want this video to be not to be massively long. But obviously with now with Virgin, I'll be able to upload a lot faster than I used to. That's the main reason for going with Virgin. I'll tell you the specs I've paid for in a minute. So Mac setup. Step two, I don't think it's that difficult with the Mac. Right, and now troubleshooting, this might help you. Hub 3.0S designed for plain sailing, but if you've noticed dro a dropped signal, there are plenty of easy fixes. So, turn it off and on. Check connections, got the right passphrase. Is your Wi-Fi turned on? Have a word with your Wi-Fi manager. Wire it up. Add a bit more oomph. And then find the right spot for your hub. So now we're on to Jargon Buster. SSID. Wi-Fi password. Settings page. Meet the inclusives. So this is trying to, they're trying to sell you extra crap. It's up to you whether you want to buy it or not. I just go with the basics. I haven't even got a phone line with them. I just go for broadband on its own. Because when I've had them in the past, they've overcharged me. They've made mistakes and constantly overcharged me. And then they can only credit you back. And you end up in a massive, vicious, vicious cycle of constantly phoning them up to get credits. And you end up out of pocket. And you decide to just leave. So 
I don't want to give them the option this time. I've heard that it's still going on and there's nothing that we can do about that. But what can we do? If we want the fast speed, we're going to have to keep an eye on what they charge us. So there we go. That's some more information. Need a hand? Go online. Talk to us with, a num with the Virgin Media phone or phone them up directly. Please be kind to the environment. And that's the, that's the uh, SKU code for the instructions. So they also sent this, which is interesting. So for my eyes only, don't miss our customer exclusive SIM offers. So up and running with Virgin Media Services at home, only our new customers get these exclusive super vast 4G SIM only deals. So two gig of data for five pounds a month, 2,500 minutes unlimited texts, four gig of data, eight pound a month. So I don't know what deal you've got at the moment, but it might be worth using these for your if you go with them for broadband, obviously they offer this as standard now. So 4 gig of data, £8 a month, 2,500 minutes unlimited text. And then you can get 20 gig of data. 20 gig of data for £18 a month, 5,000 minutes unlimited text. So that's interesting. I'm on, a, at the moment, I'm with uh, O2, a 12 month contract, and I'm getting 2 gig of data, unlimited text and unlimited calls. And I'm paying £8. So that's actually quite a lot better. So that was £3 cheaper if I went for them. But I am with a 12 month contract at the moment. So I can't move. Um, and I'm always wary of buying more than one service. So that's it almost guys. So um, I'm paying at the moment for this router. The deal was. This is the new deal. It was a Black Friday deal. So I, I've. I'm paying £30 per month for Vivid 100, which is a 100 megabyte download and 5 to 6 meg upload speed. That's what they promised. So I'll connect it to the hub and let you know what I get. So I'm sorry about this video being so long. It just, it's, but uh, you never know. You might have missed something or you might have lost your instructions and this video might help. So let me just move that hub out of the way. So, so that's it, guys. So thanks for watching and check back soon. Cheers.